these two books, same type of energy. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of What We Can Geek Them here on YouTube. My name is Giovanni Menendez, and today we're going to be talking about Reborn Book 1 from Mark Miller and Brett Capullo over at Image Comics. This is the first volume, and as you can see, it is a deliciously crafted, oversized hardcover that is basically the size of an omnibus right there, so that is always good in my book. So yeah, at the beginning of the video, I pulled out this uh, manga, the time I got reincarnated as a slime, volume one, and these two books, aside from the blue font, have something in common. Yes, you are looking at one of the rare modern isekai American-made comics. If you don't know what isekai means, basically, you know, the genre itself can date back to way before manga was ever around. Basically, the concept has been around with us for a very long time. Isekai means off-world, and it sort of took Japan by storm as of, uh, I'm gonna say, it was very prominent in the 90s, but now in the day and age that we're living in, it's Isekai fever at the time of this recording. So what the heck does off-world mean? Basically, your protagonist is sent, or reincarnated, or uh, transported, or willingly goes to a different world that is, well, different from ours in every sense of the word. It usually depicted as more uh, medieval, Dungeons and Dragons, sort of Lord of the Rings-esque uh, fantasy world where there are dragons, mythical creatures, different races, and the character and the story itself is sort of like this wish fulfillment for the reader of wanting to escape the everyday norms and live out a fantastical life in a different setting. Now with this manga, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, the character uh, dies and is reincarnated in a different world, sort of like a parallel world, into a slime creature. And it's more action comedy based and all that stuff, action adventure. Now with Reborn that I have here, it's a little bit different, but at the same time you're going to find some similarities <laughs> with what I just mentioned here. Basically the story centers around Bonnie Black, she's an old woman in a stroke ward, and uh, she's at the end of her life, she has some deep regrets. Um, years before being uh, in that ward, her husband died from uh, this crazed gunman shooting or something and then later on uh, her father died in a freak accident and you know just a series of events that led her to deteriorate in health and uh, she's old and frail and could go at any minute and she's she, you know it comes at that point in life where you're worried uh, you haven't made peace with yourself, I guess, and and uh, that's, you know, that's one of life's greatest mysteries. We don't know what's out there. Those of us of faith, we have our, um, our teachings and our beliefs and all that stuff, but, you know, there is still that looming uncertainty out there. And the book, like any good old isekai, plays or taps into that when the character uh, is transported into this other world that is very fantastical in nature. Characters that are unlike anything on Earth. Creatures that defy explanation. We don't really know what is happening, but our character is suddenly in this world. She's young. She is uh, her younger self again, like uh, I think it was 25. And is suddenly thrust into this world as the prophesized uh, Empress queen that will save the kingdom from the evil rulers that are trying to conquer everything with, you know, the, the usual death and destruction and that old uh, timely uh, trope. Uh, so 
what follows, and I won't spoil the story for you, is a series of events that if you dwell in the uh, off-world genre, or as we like to call it now, the isekai genre, that you know the story beats and you know where the characters are headed. You know that there are things that um, can be a little bit cliche, but part of the fun to me of this story is um, seeing her reaction and, and in this new setting and of course the action and just examining the character in a different way because she suddenly has a new lease on life but at what cost the book does go into or, or i should say mark miller goes into um faith regrets uh love and the bond that we share as uh family friends as humans and how our actions can transcend time and space, if you will. How our actions can create a better world, for better or worse. But in essence, time is a very precious uh, thing. I think the character work is pretty lackluster. Some of them, like our protagonist, when faced with this new world, this new circumstance, takes it surprisingly well. And that was a little disappointing for me. I thought she would have been a little bit more awestruck by all the rapid things happening all of a sudden, but do keep in mind that the story is fairly simple in nature and her reactions sort of fit with what is happening. Bonnie accepts her fate pretty quickly and that reminded me a lot of the isekai stories I have read or seen. She's the chosen one from Prophecy, so I suppose her crazy learning curve is expected. The characters are a little tropey and one-dimensional, but it's more about the experience and the journey with this book, and certainly the artwork does enrich that experience. The art in this book is simply breathtaking. I love Greg Capullo's artwork, and here, you know, he is a veteran, and he is doing just amazing work on this title, and you gotta, you gotta if you're doing a book like this, you got to bring somebody that can have that fantastical sensibility that can tap into just very hardcore imagery, but at the same time, subtleties in the characters, expressions, and the way everybody looks, the landscapes, it's all very fantastical, and it looks straight out of a fantasy book, and Kapula just nailed it, in my honest opinion. Everybody looked beautiful, even the most disgusting of characters, it still looked great. Having the story in this uh, larger format really benefits uh, the reading experience, in my honest opinion. The Dust Jacket is fantastic. Uh, this is the DCBS variant, if, in case you were wondering. But inside the Dust Jacket, you can see um, this cool foil image of Bonnie. And at the back, nothing much. It's built very well. Uh, <laughs> the Dust Jacket and the book is very squeaky for some reason, as you might have heard when I was moving it around. But still, it is a well-constructed book. Uh, it's only six issues, if I remember correctly. Um, there, there was a point in the book, and it does center around that character over there, where I thought, I get what they were going for, but I found it a little bit hokey, and it took me out of the story for a minute. Uh, uh, some of the dialogue, uh, just I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> like all the sense of wonder and everything just went down the drain for one split second so i if, if you can ignore that part you're going to be treated with a wonderful quick uh to read story about uh people um trying to do their best to survive and uh and how our actions affect others. It does sort of end rather abruptly for me, like I liked how it ended, but man, if the story could have been like a 12 issue thing and you would have spent a little bit more time world building it, I think it would have been a hit. Some would say like six issues is enough. I do, uh, there is an interview in the bonus section where uh, Miller talks about the run being like a five volume thing. 
if you can do that and, and that can come out, uh, that would be great. I do believe there is a live action Netflix adaptation coming out soon uh, with Sandra Bullock. Um, I hope so, otherwise this video is going to be terribly dated. Uh, <laughs> but for the most part, I thought that it could have been fleshed out just a little bit longer because there are some really interesting concepts and I hate when you get something cool and it's thrown away in exposition dialogue like it's nothing. Like, oh, there's the caves of something and those caves are famous for whatever and then they move on to the next thing. Here is the precipice of uh, despair where uh, souls go to yada yada. You catch my drift. Like, these concepts, you're introducing them, but you don't, you're not giving the reader enough time to really feel what the characters are experiencing. Because if I go to that place, I want to learn about that place. I don't want it to be a footnote in the big map at the end of the story where the characters started from this point and went on to X point to finish the story. I, I personally think a 12-issue run could have fleshed out things a little bit more. Um, uh, the main villain, uh, it, it's a cool concept, I will say. I think we've had villains like that before, but it's a cool idea that they want um, their end goal to be about Earth. I thought that was pretty, uh, I thought that was pretty neat. But yeah, regardless, uh, if you like this sort of off-world tale and you want a quick read with fantastic artwork, then yeah, give it a shot. Uh, Re Reborn uh, is a pretty solid entry into the Miller world, as you can see. Supposedly, all his titles are interconnected. Uh, I don't, I haven't done the, the math per se, so I don't know how it connects to any other uh, of his works. But if it does, let me know down below. I'd be interested in finding out. So yeah, it's a fun book regardless. Pick it up if you can. It's a cheap book. You can find it at different websites. Uh, Reborn, book one. Really uh, cool, in my opinion. So yeah, guys. Thank you so much for watching another installment here at A Week in Geekdom. As always, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and just being a wonderful part of this awesome community. I love being here, and I love that I get to share a few minutes of my time hawking and geeking out about my favorite things with you guys. As always, follow me on your favorite social media platform. That's very important. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for more stuff. When I'm not posting videos, I'm over there doing some other stuff. I'm also on the... Uh, Omnibus Collectors Network with Omnibros Live. So if you don't see videos on my channel, I'm probably over there working with my fellow Omnibros. So keep that in mind. Thank you everybody for subscribing once again. I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode. <laughs>